In this video, we'll take a look at how to use layout managers in PyQt6. Layout managers are a way of automatically structuring our widgets in our windows so that they can respond appropriately when the user resizes or maximizes the window. I'll cover all you need to know about the different layouts as well as which to choose based on the different scenarios you could encounter. Just to give a quick recap of the code I have here, I've created a new window here and I've also created a push button and the push button is set as the central widget of the window. In PyQt6, the three main layout managers you use are VBox layout, HBox layout as well as grid layout. We'll first take a look at VBox layout which helps to lay out all our widgets vertically. To use this layout, I'll first import it from Qt widgets. I'll then initialize a new QVBox layout and store in it in a variable. Using this layout, I can add my widgets. In this case, I just have two simple buttons. I can add the widgets by using the add widget method on our layout. Note that we cannot apply a layout directly to the Q main window object we have created. This is because it only accepts one widget and that is the central widget. Usually, the way we get around this issue is by creating sort of a temporary widget that stores the layout and we then set that widget as the central widget. So to do this, we will first import a QWidget object. We will then create an instance of it and this will be our center widget. So I'll create a variable called center widget. Since we want to set the layout of this widget to our VBox layout, we will use the dot set layout method that is available on all widgets. We can then specify the layout as the argument. In this case, our layout is just called layout. Finally, we can then set it as the central widget of our window. Once that's done, we can see that our window now has two vertically stacked buttons. And if you try to resize it, the proportions and sizes are automatically scaled like what you see on most applications today. Next up, we have the QHBox layout. As you can probably infer, this is very similar to the QVBox layout, only that the QHBox layout is horizontal instead of vertical. I will use the same example here so you can see the differences. On the QHBox layout, we can also use the same add widget methods to be able to add our widgets and everything else pretty much applies the same. So if we run this, we can see that we have two buttons aligned horizontally. Now, although it doesn't look like layout managers might be particularly useful right now, since we only have two buttons, in future videos, we'll look at how to add more widgets and adding event handlers to them. And we'll definitely need layout managers for that. We can also combine QVBox layout and QHBox layout. For example, if we wanted two buttons which are horizontally aligned above and a label below it, we need to be able to use both QVBox layout and QHBox layout. We will do this by first creating a parent layout that holds all of the widgets and layouts that we have in our window. Since the main layout that we have here is a vertical layout, I'll use QVBox layout. Now within this parent layout, we want the buttons to be horizontally aligned. So to get them to be horizontally aligned, we'll create a separate button layout that is a QHBox layout to be able to ensure that the buttons are horizontally aligned. We then add our buttons to this button layout. Once that's done, we can add our button layout to the parent layout. We do this using the add layout method, which is similar to the add widget method, just that instead of widgets, we're adding layouts. Since we are trying to have a label that appears below the two buttons, we will also need to create a label. We can do this by importing the queue label object and making an instance of it. 
once it has been created we will then add that label to the parent layout using the add widget method we also need to remember to change the set layout method to setting it as the parent layout in this case and if we run it now we can see that we have a simple application that has two buttons on top which are horizontally aligned and a label below that is vertically aligned together with the buttons this is a simple example of how you could use both QHBox layout and QVBox layout together but there, are, but there are definitely a lot of other possibilities as well so just to quickly recap we can use the add layout method even on layouts that we have created to sort of nest them to make more complex and customized layouts another thing to note is that the order of the widgets depends on the position of where we call the add widget or add layout methods so if we instead added the label before the button layout the label would appear on top of the two buttons if we wanted to add some spacing between the widgets we could also use the add spacing method on our layout this is available for both qvbox layout and qhbox layout So for example, if we wanted to add some spacing between our buttons, we could use the add spacing method. In between adding our widgets, we could also add some spacing after we have created the second button. nesting layouts to create more complex structures can quickly make our code cluttered and difficult to read this is where the next layout comes into play which is grid layout the grid layout is sort of a combination of both the vbox layout and hbox layout it allows us to add a widget and also specify which row and column we want to place it in for example if we wanted to create the same design with one label vertically aligned on top and two buttons below which are horizontally aligned we could use QGrid layout to start we will first import it and create an instance of it that is assigned to the parent layout variable we can then add our label using the parent layout.add widget method the first argument it takes is the widget the second is the row index and the third is the column index since we want to place the label at the very top we will specify the row as zero meaning the first row and the column as zero meaning the first column we can then also do something similar for our buttons using the add widget method we will add the first button to the second row and first column and the second button to the second row and the second column now our Q label object here only takes up one column and we can show that by aligning the Q label we do this by importing QT from QT core and using it to set an alignment flag which is essentially an option of the Q label object when initializing it if we then run it we can see that when the text is centered it only takes up one column how the grid layout works is that the horizontal length of each column is determined by the longest widget in that particular column that's how it works for rows and for the vertical length this makes it adjust to our widget sizes and essentially just means that our widgets are sized relative to the other widgets in its column and row which can be really useful in most cases 
this is much more convenient than having to nest different layouts which can quickly grow out of hand. To make the widget go across two columns, we can use what is called a column span. The add widget method here also takes optional arguments for the row span and the column span. Now since the column span comes after the row span, I'll just specify a row span of 1 so that the widget takes up one row and a column span of 2 so that the widget takes up two columns. Now we can see that the label takes up two columns like we wanted it to. Just like with QVBox layout and QHBox layout, we can also specify some spacing for QGrid layout. In the case of QGrid layout, we can use set horizontal spacing which is a method that allows us to specify the spacing between each column we can see that the buttons have been spaced out there is also another method for setting the vertical spacing which specifies the spacing between each row and that can be used in a similar way as well but in this case if we set the spacing between each row it's not going to be too noticeable since there's already a lot of space between our rows lastly we can also change the minimum width or height of a specific row or column this means that we can ensure that the height of the row is of a certain length even if the widget's length is shorter than that so we can do this using parent layout.set row minimum height and the first argument it takes is the row we are trying to modify. In this case, I will specify the second row. I will then specify the minimum height and I will use it. And I will use the minimum height of 200 to make it more obvious. As a challenge for you, see if you can create this simple login form layout. The widget for the input field here is QLineEdit which allows the user to enter some text that we can then use. We will look at how to receive user input in the next video but for now just import QLineEdit to show an input field. So to start, the way I would tackle this challenge is to first create the initial window and then I will initialize a QGrid layout as the parent layout. I will then create all the labels I need. So this is the login label and the email and password label to indicate to the user what they should enter. I will then create the input fields for the email and password as well as the submit button. After that, I will add the widgets to the parent layout. I'll first add the login label as the first widget and give it a column span of 2 so that it can take out both the label and the input field columns. After that, I will add the email label and the email input. The first one being at column 1 and the second one being at column 2. I'll do the same for the password as well. And finally, I'll add the submit button below as the last widget and having a column span of two. And finally, I'll set that entire parent layout as the layout of a widget and set that widget to the central widget of our window.
So if we run it now, we can see that we sort of have the layout that we want, but the initial login label object at the top seems to be pushing down everything. So we might want to specify a maximum height for it. I'll set the login label to have a maximum height of 100. And I'll also align it to be in the center. And that will be using the same method as we did before. And now we basically have the layout that we saw initially. You could of course customize it, such as customizing the font. But I'll leave it to a later video where I cover more on how to style our widgets. Now if you might have noticed, the password field in our form allows for anybody to see the password of the user as they enter the password, which is not how normal applications would work. We would want a way where the user can enter the password and not have anybody else see it. So to do this, we can use something called the echo mode, which is how the user would see the inputs that they have entered. We can change that by using the dot set echo mode method and specify an option. As with all things in PyQt, the way we would specify this option is using an enumerated value which you can do by using Qline edit echo mode. And then we have a few options. In this case, I'll choose password. And if we now run the application again, whenever the user enters characters in their password field, it is hidden so nobody else can see it. Now, if this is a little tricky to get right, that's perfectly fine because we'll look at how to use QDesigner in a future video, which allows us to use a drag and drop interface and is then converted the code automatically. But it's still important to know how writing code allows us to generate these layouts. All right, just to recap the different layouts, we have QV box layout and QH box layout, which we use to display widgets in entirely vertically or horizontally. We do this by using the add widget method on the layout and the add spacing to add some spacing between the widgets. We can also nest these layouts such as adding a QH box layout to a QV box layout. But if you want a more complex layout, it's probably better to use a QGrid layout since you can easily specify which row and column to place widgets at. Alright, that's about it. We'll cover more on how to handle user input in the next video. If you enjoyed this video or if this video has helped you, please leave a like and possibly subscribe as well to help my channel grow as well.